Growing up, I knew I never wanted to have children, so sterilisation has always been on my mind. I've researched other methods of birth control, but now I'm left with female sterilisation. That's a woman's right to choose whether she doesn't want to have kids. Exactly. But why do you want to go to the extreme of being sterile? Oh, I'd also make an excellent stripper, but that doesn't mean I should be one. With doctor's recommendation, women in their 20s are struggling to be sterilised. It would be fatal to you. My name is Magenta Balcom and I'll be exploring the pros and cons of sterilisation and what it means to be child free. I'm just not sure that it's something that I really want. For the past three years, I've been thinking about sterilisation and whether or not it's something I want to do. I'm 20 years old now and I've been having second thoughts about taking birth control long term. The pill that I'm taking at the moment is Femidine. It is combined with two hormones, oestrogen and progesterone. I have never been the nurturing type. Even as a child, I knew that I never wanted to have children of my own. That decision hasn't changed growing up, but as I know sterilisation is a serious procedure, I wanted to do my research on what it actually is. So here comes the technical stuff about sterilisation. Female sterilisation is when the eggs are blocked from travelling down the fallopian tubes, therefore being unable to meet the sperm and fertilisation cannot happen. So female sterilisation is the equivalent to men getting a vasectomy. However, there are a variety of ways to be sterilised which is called tubal ligation. In the UK, sterilisation done under the NHS has dropped by 46% in the last 10 years, so more women are going to private hospitals to get the procedure done. I think that this may be due to doctors being less likely to sterilise someone who's under the age of 30. I received an email from a woman who would like to remain anonymous and she wants to share her story. I have been pregnant three times. I, without hesitation, had abortions each time. The first time I was 21, and honestly that was the point I realised I never wanted to have a family. The condom broke and the plan B pill failed. I was almost at the period of time when abortion was not legally an option. I struggled with my decision, but I knew I would never finish college with my peers and I'll be another statistic. The other two serious boyfriends were cheating and verbally abusive. They were pathological liars and always wanted kids, but I knew they wouldn't be present parents. The body is only a vessel, those souls or spirits who exist in my life in some other relationship, and I truly believe that. Just reading that right now, it's almost like you can feel her struggle and what she's been through, you can picture it in your head, it's very, very emotional, very detailed letter, and I feel like her decision not to have those children was purely the right decision, especially if, because she was in an abusive relationship, so I feel like it's definitely the right decision for her to do that. Being sterilised is a big decision, but I've been thinking about how my family would react to it and whether or not they'd support me. So I met up with my mum to discuss her thoughts on the matter. I'm thinking about being sterilised because it's, I don't know, I thought about it because it's something that I wanted to do because I don't want children and I'm always scared of maybe becoming pregnant even though I am on like uh, birth control like the pill. And I just wanted to speak to you about, see what your opinion is on it and see whether you disagree, agree on the decision for me to be sterilised? Um, well, it's up to you, ultimately, but I think I think it could be probably a good idea because yeah. it's so expensive to live nowadays. Um, kids, it's, you know, it's a try and sort of time bringing up kids. Um, if you want careers, I don't think you can do everything yeah. unless you've got lots of money to back you up. So I know that you've had the coil done before and I just, there's something that I may be thinking of doing now because uh, they don't really recommend people to be sterilised under the age of 30. I want to know what your experience is with the coil, just in general. Generally, it was okay. I mean, afterwards it was fine, had no problems um, whatsoever, but having it inserted um, is a little bit trying. Had it done at doctor's surgery, so they don't do it on a daily basis, and, you know, it wasn't the nicest experience, yeah. but... Did it, did it hurt a lot? Like... Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, they... Yeah. Obviously, I'm, I'm on the pill at the moment. I think I've been on the pill for roughly about seven years now. And I'm always scared of having medical complications from being on the pill for such a long period of time. And it's just something that, I don't know, I just have a, I have a fear about. I mean, I've known people who've been on the pill 30, 40 years um, yeah. because they never wanted to have children. They were married, you know. Um, and as far as I'm aware, they had no problems. Having a conversation with my mum really made me think about how women face such difficulty in their choices. 
I travelled to Basingstoke to meet Doris Mafarsway, a South African-born nurse who has had two kids and was sterilised at age 36. She's helped doctors during the surgery and has taken care of patients. So I wanted to talk to her to get a better understanding about the procedure. What are the side effects of sterilisation? Pain. Normally pain after it has, it has but it's not too bad. It just has for a couple of weeks and then it can just be, you know, sorted with, with a analgesia. Are there any types of patients that aren't suitable to be sterilised? So for example, people who suffer from mental health conditions? Basically, I wouldn't put it like that suitable, but it's not advisable. For example, as you've just said, somebody with mental illness, people with mental illness, some of them, they have the capacity, but those that lack the capacity, we can't just say, oh, just because she cannot decide of what's right and wrong for her, we just do it. So what we do, if in that case, that person will have to take into the courts and then the judge the judges in the court of magistrates, they will make a decision whether to go ahead or not. When did you make the decision to be sterilised and what was the process like for you? It was not a difficult decision because of the reason why I ended up doing it. Uh, when I was pregnant with my last child at the age of 36, towards the last trimester, which is the last three months before I deliver, so uh, my blood pressure just continued to go up and it was just uncontrollable. And then because, unfortunately for me, or fortunately, I'm also a midwife, I'm a trained midwife, so I know exactly the complications and I know when it starts. So it just continued in so much that I had to be delivered a month before. It was just uncontrollable. What kind of advice would you give for me right now for me making the decision whether to be sterilised or not? For now, I'll say, please, do not think about it because just for your best interest, really. For now, you're still young. There's still a lot that you're going to meet in, or, you know, throughout your life. I'm on the pill at the moment. I've been mm. on the pill for quite some time now, and I was thinking of maybe having the coil done. Yes. Would you recommend someone of my age to have even the coil done, or just to stay on the pill? Depends. If, if the pill is causing trouble for you, there are problems with it, firstly, here in the UK is good because there's always a GUM clinic everywhere. It should be accessible to you. So there are specially trained nurses there who are family planning nurses who work in that unit. So they will sit down with you and check at first what is the problem with the pill? Is it not suiting you or why? What are your reasons? And then if you really, after that you feel, okay, I'm Adam and I want to take, do that, you, you can. Speaking to Doris gave me more of an insight about sterilisation from a professional point of view. However, I've always wanted to talk to someone who has a strong opinion against sterilisation. Having children means less time for vacations and spin class, where the real meaning in life resides, right? I mean, have you ever seen anything more selfish, decadent and stupid? You know, I'm still learning who I am. I've got all of these ambitions that I, I want to fulfil. So, let me start here with this term, childless. I have to admit I have a problem with it, even though I'm using it in this talk. It implies that there's something missing. And he said, I, can't, I find women that want children, real women, and I find women that, um, that don't want children somehow not feminine. I wanted to find someone with a strong opinion about female sterilisation, so I went onto various web forums to try and find people to contact. Some of the comments I've seen have been quite strong, but when it comes to actually contacting them, we haven't had much of a response. And I think that's because people have no problem with saying stuff online. But when it comes to saying stuff in person, that's when people don't have the guts to voice their opinions. If you have an opinion, you might as well own your own opinion. Even if people disagree with you, that's what happens in life. There are always going to be people who disagree. So you might as well just own it. On the Child Free by Choice website, I was contacted by Kerry Kenzior a 37-year-old pharmaceutical representative from Mississippi. She never wanted to have children and was thinking about being sterilised, but due to a cancer scare, she's had to have a hysterectomy done. I spoke to her via Skype to hear her story. So what age did you realise that you didn't want to have children? I was probably in college, maybe about 19 or 20 years old. Yeah. Um, and I just realizing all my friends planning the rest of their lives and I just did not I always thought I'd feel that 
desire. And then I just realized as I started getting older, I knew I was going to have a degree and like a job and like my life started to be sort of like planned out over the next few years that I just didn't have the desire. <laughs> so that was like your all. main reason. Yeah, people. primarily. And, um, you know, growing, like watching my friends who, you know, I'm 37. Yeah. So many of my friends have, have killed children and of various ages you know I think my friend with her oldest is like 14 and just watching the struggles and I just I was just it just reinforces my not desire to have them how have you sort of dealt with people who make those negative comments towards you yeah I mean I just think I'm so used to it now which is sad most of the pressure actually comes from my client, my work clients, and it's always men, which is yeah. the strangest thing. And it's men who, you know, are obviously working. They're probably in their 50s. They may even have, you know, starting to have grandchildren. And they just cannot understand why, you know, a young couple that's doing well and owns a home and is educated would not want to have children. And it's difficult because it's a different generation um they just don't get it and I feel the most pressure from that particular group of people and I find it very strange because I'm thinking you probably work as a physician you know 12 hours a day sometimes on weekends you're never home doing any of the hard stuff you know your your wife probably doesn't have to work you know so she's caring for the children and of course, it's easy for you. It's easy to be a dad. It's fun to be a dad. How did you kind of have that conversation with your partner that like you didn't want to have children and you found out that he was an like, acceptance of that? How did you sort of have that conversation? So I knew before we started dating that if we were to date and be serious, that I had to be like very respectful of like everything going on and that I shouldn't pursue it unless I was serious. So we kind of both knew that. And then maybe like, six months or a year you know into dating when we really decided that we were going to be serious and we weren't living together yet um you know the conversation had come up and I was actually shocked and like pleasantly surprised that he felt the same way I did like you know he loves he and he's a funny goofy person he's a great uncle um and he I think he likes the interaction with kids especially like teenagers he has no clue what to do with a baby. I think it scares the crap out of him, to be honest. What would your advice to me if I do decide to get this procedure done and to be sterilized, what would your advice um, just in general be? My advice would be to just be prepared to answer hard questions, but don't feel like you have to. It's nobody else's business. It's nobody else's life. It's nobody else's decision. Do what's right for you. I was inspired by Kerry's honesty and how much of her personal life she shared with me. After having a better understanding about the procedure, I know what I want to do. Over the past few weeks, I've spoken to various people about their opinions on sterilisation. And one point that kept on being brought up repeatedly and was mentioned by my mum, Doris and Kerry, is that they recommended me to wait until I'm at least 30 before thinking about being sterilised. My decision at the moment is to just stay on the pill for a few more years. I feel quite healthy on the pill, I haven't had any problems with it. And then in a few years time I want to think about alternatives like the coil. My reasons for not wanting to be sterilised at my age now is because I don't feel the need to be sterilised. I feel quite fine, like I said, being on the pill. And I don't want to have to fight with doctors and go through that long process it takes to, be, to have the procedure done. My opinions have not changed at all about the procedure. I still think women should have the option to have it done if they really want. But personally, for me at the moment, I want to wait until I'm at least 30 before I decide to have that done. So, were you plan ever planning on having children? <laughs> Stop it, sorry. <laughs> Is it other gentleman? You're right. Oh, yeah, no, I'm just cringing at myself. <laughs> yeah, just like you're telling us not. I know. Sorry, I'm really hungry. <laughs> so